Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the old leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The sermon for the second Sunday of Easter is given by the Reverend Ruth Ball. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and sat, stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Every year on the first Sunday after Easter Day, the Gospel reading is the same. And it is the one we have just heard about the disciples seeing Jesus after the resurrection. And particularly about Thomas, or doubting Thomas, as he is sometimes nicknamed. This name is often seen as a rather derogatory one, as if none of the other disciples had any doubts about the resurrection of Jesus, but only Thomas. I personally think that Thomas should not be singled out for his doubts, but rather for his honesty. If we look back to the start of the reading, Jesus appeared to the disciples on the evening of the first Easter day. Thomas was not with them. We don't know why, he just wasn't. The disciples had heard from Mary that she had seen the risen Lord. But were they now celebrating this wonderful event? No, they had locked themselves in a room together because they were frightened of the authorities. Despite the news, 
they were full of fear and yes, probably doubt as well. Because when Jesus appeared to them, he showed them his hands and his side. And so they too believed, as Mary had, that Jesus was indeed alive. But it seems that it took this appearance to convince them of the resurrection. So Thomas, when he returned to the group, only had a second-hand account of seeing Jesus and he was not convinced. He wanted proof that this person was indeed Jesus and the proof he demanded was seeing and putting his finger in the nail marks on Jesus' hand and putting his hand in the wounds, wound in Jesus' side where the spear had pierced him. It was a whole week before the next appearance happened. Imagine how long that must have seemed to the disciples and especially to Thomas, waiting for his chance to see the risen Lord. But he was still with the disciples. He hadn't given up on waiting and left them. He trusted. When Jesus did appear to Thomas and the others, he invited Thomas to do what he had demanded. We're not told if Thomas did actually touch the wounds or whether just seeing Jesus and the wounds was enough. What he did do was make a clear declaration of his absolute faith in Jesus as my Lord and my God. Then came Jesus's response when he said, blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. As an RE teacher for many years, I was often asked questions about faith, and especially after I was ordained, and so it was known at school that I had a faith. I would be asked, often by rather belligerent teenagers, how I could prove that there is a God. I would usually respond with, how can you prove that there isn't one? Because after all, that is what faith is. It is not something that can be proved in the way that perhaps a scientific fact might be proved. And yet those of us with a faith will often have our own personal proofs, times within our own life and experience when we have known for sure that Jesus and God is with us. Even those with a great deal of faith may well have times of doubt and questioning and it is wrong I believe to see this as a sign of weakness or a lack of faith. If faith is to be a living faith it needs to grow and develop. We are all on a journey of faith as I often tell baptism families who bring their children to begin their faith journey. None of us has reached our destination and as we travel the road through life we will encounter new circumstances and situations that may well challenge our faith. And this is not a bad thing. If our faith is to be alive and our outlook open and loving, then we need to be able to work through new situations and challenges and to develop and deepen our faith accordingly. Many times in the Bible, there are accounts of doubt and questioning. The Psalms contain many verses where the writer calls out to God in doubt and fear. Indeed, on the cross, Jesus called out words from Psalm 22 when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We are not alone if we have moments like this. We are currently living through particularly challenging times. And there may well be moments when we wonder where God is in all that is going on. We are without much of the support we can normally rely on from our fellow Christians, and we have to find new ways of sharing mutual support and fellowship. If you have had feelings of doubt or fear in this time, that is perfectly understandable and not something to be ashamed of. What I believe God wants is honesty and openness. When we pray, God does not want us to pretend that all is well if it is not, that we are fine and coping when we are not. 
What God wants is for us to share our concerns and worries, our questions and our uncertainties through prayer. God already knows what our concerns and worries are, but is waiting for us to open our hearts and to acknowledge them. We may not have our usual support from our church community, but we can find other ways to help to strengthen our faith in these difficult times. We might experience God in the beauty of creation in the world around us, particularly in this spring season of new life. We might hear of or witness the Christian love of others shown in their actions in these difficult times. Or there may be an event that shows that God is indeed at work in the world. Any of these might help to lead us from moments of doubt or questioning to a strengthening of our faith. Thomas had doubts when told about the miraculous resurrection of Jesus. But then he showed the strength of his faith when he was moved to exclaim, my Lord and my God. Because Thomas was not for a while convinced that Jesus was risen, did not change the fact that he was. Jesus was waiting for Thomas to come to that faith for himself. In the same way, when we doubt that God is there, God does not disappear, but is still there waiting for us to be ready to come back. I recently came across a prayer by St Ignatius of Loyola, which addresses times when we might feel distant from God. And I would like to end these words this morning with this prayer. O oh Christ Jesus, when all is darkness and we feel our weakness and helplessness, give us the sense of your presence, your love and your strength. Help us to have perfect trust in your protecting love and strengthening power, so that nothing may frighten or worry us. For living close to you, we shall see your hand, your purpose, your will, through all things. Amen. risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And we end with the blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>